Today we're going to be learning about multiplying and dividing in scientific notation. So I'm going to type in a couple of steps that it'll take for you guys to um, answer questions that you have to multiply or divide in. So please go ahead and write them um, off to the side in your notes. The first step of what you're going to do is you're just going to multiply or divide the factors. So that first number in scientific notation. Then the second step that you're going to do is you're going to add or subtract your exponents depending on uh, if you're multiplying or dividing. Okay, remember our exponent rules, all right? When you are multiplying, you add exponents. And then when you're dividing, okay, that means you're uh, I don't have a division. I'll show this. This is division. So when you're dividing, that means you're going to subtract the exponents. Okay. Then subtract exponents. Okay. So that's the second step. The third step is to make sure your answer is in correct scientific notation. And what I mean by that is you might have to take it out of scientific notation to put it back in correctly. We'll do some examples so you guys understand what I'm talking about, okay? But it's really three steps that we're gonna cover, okay? And pretty straightforward, okay? So make sure you write these down um, in your notes and we'll go ahead and get into some examples. So now we're going to go ahead and go through our steps. So it says to find the product or the quotient, okay? So this time we're gonna find the product because we have our numbers multiplying in scientific notation. So step one, and I'm even gonna show it here, you're going to multiply your factors. The factors are the first numbers in scientific notation. So we have three times five. Well, that's an easy 15, okay? So that's great. Now. Our second step is we have to add or subtract the exponents. So our exponents are negative five and negative two. Because we are multiplying, we add the exponents. Okay, so that makes a negative seven. All right, then our third step is to make sure it's in scientific notation. So our answer that we have thus far is 15, what we got when we multiplied the factors, times 10 to the negative seventh because that's what our exponents were. Now, looking at this, I see that this is not in correct scientific notation because 15 is way too large. So to put it into correct scientific notation, I go ahead and take it out as I should. So 15 with the decimal at the end with all whole numbers, I'm gonna move the decimal seven times to make it smaller. Three, four, five, six, seven. So the decimal is now moved over there with a bunch of zeros. Okay, so we're putting it into standard form. Now, the number that I get when I put it into standard form is five zeros with a one and a five with our decimal back there. So to put in correct scientific notation, I know I have to put the decimal so it is 1.5. Okay, so I'm going to now move one, two, three, four, five. It's six times and it was a small number, so it's 10 or 1.5 times 10 to the negative sixth power. And that's the final answer. So step three might be the hardest or longest um, part of our whole problem, except it's just taking something out of scientific notation and putting it back in correctly. All right, so now I'm gonna go into the next example. When we have six times eight times 10, eight to times 10 to the negative fifth, this really means six times 10 to the zero power, okay? Because there's no 10 there. So we're doing that times eight times 10 to the negative fifth power. So that's what we're really doing in scientific notation. All right, so our step one is to multiply or divide the factors. Well, again, we're multiplying these numbers. So we do six times eight, which is 48. Our second step is to add or subtract the exponents, okay, again, because they're multiplying, we are adding, so we have zero plus a negative five, well, that's negative five, okay? The third step is where we see if it's in the correct scientific notation. I have 48 times 10 to the negative fifth, 
And as you see that, it is not in correct scientific notation. So what happens is, is I have to get it out of scientific notation. I add my decimal at the end of the whole number, and then I move it to the left five times to make it smaller. Now I put the number back into scientific notation by moving the decimal back between the four and the eight. And when I do that, I move it one, two, three, four times, and it was small to begin with, and that is our answer. Go ahead and try the next example on your own. We're gonna now do a couple more examples, and it looks like we finally got some division going on. So again, it says find the product of or quotient, and then we have to, of course, already answer in scientific notation. This is the same, the same steps that we have, guys, going forward. So our first step is to multiply or divide our first factor. Well, we have these two numbers that we're going to divide. So we have 1.5, divided by six, okay? Because there's no decimal with the six, I, I keep the decimal with the 1.5 the same and bring it up. Six does not go into one at all, but it goes into 15 two times, which is 12. When I subtract, I get a three, so I add a zero down. Six goes into 35 times. So when we divide 1.5 by six, it's 0.25. The second step is to add or subtract our exponents. Because they are dividing, we subtract. So we have negative eight minus seven. This is definitely when you do your keep, change, change. So now I have negative eight plus a negative seven, which is negative 15. Our third step is to make sure it's in scientific notation. My answer that I've received first is 0.25 times 10 to the negative 15th, okay? So this is not in scientific notation. So with 0.25, okay, we actually move 15 times, okay? So you guys will end up getting 15 zeros to the left because it's small, all right? Now, I want you guys to think about that. If I had 15 zeros, and let's see if I can count them all out correctly. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then we had our decimal up front. When we count all the way back, we know the decimal needs to end up between the two and the five. So we count all of our 15 and then one more. So we end up getting 2.5 times 10 to the negative 16th power because we just brought it over one more spot. And that is your correct answer. Okay, in this next example, we have that 4.6. Just like in the multiplication problem, this is really 9.2 times 10 to the 12th, and we divide it by 4.6 times 10 to the zero power. So now we do the same steps that we've done before. We divide, so we have 9.2 divided by 4.6, okay? And when we do that, we have to move this decimal place over once with the 4.6. I also do it inside, and that's what brings my decimal to where it needs to be. You cannot divide by a number that has a decimal place. That's why we move it, okay? So 446 goes into 92 twice because 46 times 2 is 92. So we finished our first step. Now, the second step, we have to worry about our exponents. We're dividing, so we actually subtract. So we do 12 minus zero, which is 12. And then we have to see if our answer is in scientific notation. Our answer is two times 10 to the 12th. Because our factor is between one and 10, it's actually already in scientific notation. So you don't have to alter it. And sometimes you guys will have answers like that so that we don't have to worry about it. And that is your answer. Go ahead and try the last example on your own. Don't forget to move the decimal just like we did with the 4.6 when you're dividing.